G'day coppers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lockout's Four Wheel Driving, we're looking at how you can arc weld with car batteries for trackside repairs. Battery connections, series versus parallel, electrode selection and plenty more. So, let's get into it. First up, battery connections. So the first battery bank configuration we'll check out is called parallel. Now we have a 12 volt battery here and the positive side of that 12 volt battery is connected directly to the positive side of our voltage meter. And the negative side of that battery is connected directly to the negative side of that voltage meter and we're reading 12 volts. All is right in the world, so this is a 12 volt battery. <laughs> Let's put in a second 12 volt battery. There we go. And we've connected up both positives to the positive side of the meter and both the negatives to the negative side of the meter, but we're still only reading 12 volts. There's no increase in voltage. Third battery, all the positives are connected together directly to the positive side of the meter and all the negatives are connected together directly to the negative side of the meter and we're still only reading 12 volts. We only have a potential difference between the positive and the negative of 12 volts. But what we have done is increase the battery bank capacity. Let's say this is a 100 amp hour battery, 100 amp hour battery and 100 amp hour battery. Well, that gives us a battery bank capacity of 300 amp hours. So we've got 12 volts and a potential of 300 amp hours. So now let's check out the series battery bank configuration and see what differentiates it from the parallel system. So we was gonna start off with one battery just like we did before, with the positive of that battery connected to the positive side of the meter, and the negative of that battery connected to the negative side of the meter. And we're gonna get 12 volts. Beautiful, all is right in the world. But let's put in the second battery, this time instead of in parallel, in series. There we go. So this time instead of connecting our two positives together and our two negatives together, it's a little bit different. So we've connected the positive of the second battery to the negative of the first battery. And we've moved the negative from the first battery to the negative of the second battery. And you'll see what's happened to the voltage here. It's gone up to 24 volts. So we've added the 12 volts and the 12 volts there to give us a total of 24 volts. Let's put in a third battery. So this time, we've moved the negative again to the negative of the third battery. We've connected the positive of that third battery to the negative of that second battery. Okay, let's check out the voltage meter. 36 volts. So we've got 12 volts plus 12 volts plus 12 volts gives us a total of 36 volts. But as I say, there's no such thing as a free lunch. And even though we've got 36 volts here and we might have 100 amp hour capacity here, 100 amp hour capacity here, and 100 amp hour capacity here, remember in a parallel configuration that gives a total of 300 amp hours. Well, this time it only gives us 100 amp hours in total. So we've got 36 volts and 100 amp hours. That's how series works, which is great. And now we know the difference between series and parallel. So we can increase our voltage so we can actually make an arc. But how are we going to wire that into our welder? Let's check it out now. Now this is a series battery bank configuration with 12 volts on the first battery plus 12 volts on the second battery plus 12 volts on the third battery. Of course, gives us a potential difference in between the positive and the negative of 36 volts. How are we going to wire up that welder? Well, we're going to put the positive onto the ground onto our workpiece, which may seem unfamiliar to some people. And the negative side actually goes to our electrode, but it depends on the type of electrode you're using. This configuration is called DCEP or direct current earth positive. Anyone who has had a decent look at one of these electrodes will know that there's codes on them and those codes actually mean something. So let's check that out now. Now let's have a go at cracking that code with two fairly common rods, the 6010 and the 7018. The E, well that just means it's an arc welding electrode. Pretty good there. Next one, the 60, 60,000 PSI tensile strength. So that's the tensile strength of the material that actually goes into the weld. The number one, well, all welding positions. So it's good for directly in front of you. It's good for overhead. It's good for vertical up. It's good for vertical down. Every single welding position, it's a very versatile rod in that department. And the zero, well, that's direct current earth positive. And the reason you use that is for deeper penetration and a narrower bead. Let's compare that with a 7018. Again, the E just denotes it's a electrode arc welding rod. Beautiful. Next one, 70, 70,000 PSI tensile strength. So the tensile strength of the weld material here is a little bit more than the tensile strength of the weld material here. Next one, one, all welding position. So it's good for overhead, vertical up, vertical down, directly in front, everything. Eight. So that means 
AC or alternating current or direct current earth positive. So the previous configuration we had it that we showed you on the previous slide, well, it's good for that one there, or AC, alternating current. What we're familiar with, it comes out of a, a power point. But we don't happen to have that usually <laughs> when we've got batteries. But it'll work with our direct current earth positive. Now, you will see the dash one on these rods, and the dash one just means improved toughness or ductility. Now, the only other physical characteristic of the rod we need to look at is the different diameters. So let's check that out now. You need to take the material thickness into consideration. So 1.5 to 2 mil, a 2.5 mil electrode diameter. 2.5 to 5, 3.2. 5 to 8 is 4 mil, and 8 or over is 5 mil. But you'll also notice a recommended current range. The difference between commercial machines and a battery setup is the commercial machines are constant current and the voltage varies. Whereas with batteries, you have a constant battery voltage and the current varies. That's why if you've done a bit of welding, arc welding that is, with conventional machines, welding with batteries, well, it's it's just a little different. It, it doesn't feel right, <laughs> but you'll soon get used to it. So here's what's in my welding bag. Now, I primarily carry tools and, and spares and whatnot in these canvas style bags. I think they were originally designed to carry tent pegs. The reason being is they don't break and they don't rattle. First up, Decent pair of gloves, arc welding gloves. The reason you use arc welding gloves is arc welding spits fire like a dragon. <laughs> it's unlike any other welding procedure. I primarily TIG weld at home, reason being is uh, very versatile. Aluminium, stainless steel, mild steel, all of it not an issue. You only have to change electrodes. You can even use the same uh, gas. But the problem is it's hard to take a g-size cylinder of argon when you're out four-wheel driving so arc welding it is and we'll just have to put up with the spitting of fire okay next one now this is an on-the-go <laughs> welding mask this isn't the sort of welding mask you'd use at home obviously it's designed for a quick weld to get yourself out of trouble and uh, either that or um, cover the rest of your face because there's lots of uv being produced when you weld will give you a nasty sunburn and even melanoma. So you want to cover up as much as possible, but you do what you have to do when you're out the back, but you still want to protect your eyes. So welding goggle it is. Okay. Bag of battery clamps. Because not all the time we come across a battery with studs on the top. So you might only have the post style. So bag of battery clamps. Ah, uh, yes. So I've got some short lengths of wire. Now this is, I believe, 35 mil cross-sectional area wire. Positive one side, negative on the other, so I don't bugger it up. The reason I've got three is you have a pair and a spare. Okay, now this is the actual welding wire. Now you will notice that I've got a dirty great big Anderson plug on the end there. The reason I've got a dirty great big Anderson plug on the end is it plugs into my jumper leads. Now, I'll put a link up above if you haven't seen it where I constructed some jumper leads and this plugs into them. Okay, so we've got the earth clamp on one side and on the other side, we've got the electrode holder. I have seen people who use the actual uh, jumper lead ends and multi-grips or, or lock nose pliers and that's great, but it's a bit dodgy, <laughs> so I put this together. Okay. You're going to need to clean your surfaces. I'm a TIG welder and cleanliness is next to God. So you need to make sure your surfaces are nice and clean. A chipping hammer because unlike MIG or TIG welding, you get a build up of slag on top of the weld when you do arc welding. So you need to chip that away. So you need some sort of chipping hammer. And finally, I've got a welding rod holder. The reason I use this is it keeps all the moisture away from the welding rods. So I've got some two and a half mil, or 2.6, and some 3.2s. All right, now you've seen what's in the welding bag, let's get out there and actually do some welding. So here we have three lead acid starter batteries, and we'll show you the voltages. First up, this battery is 12.94 volts. The second battery is 13.06 volts, and the final battery is 12.64 volts and I have admittedly 
charge these up with the AC powered charger just to top them up because they've been sitting around for a while. Okay, let's show you how to put them in series to show you that actually works. So now we put these two lead acid starter batteries in series. So we'll check the negative on this battery and the positive on this battery. And we're coming in at a scratch over 26 volts. Let's put that third battery in series and see if we're getting that around 36 volts or so. Okay, now we've got the three batteries in series. Negative to positive, negative to positive. Let's check the voltage from positive to the negative of this battery here. And as you can see, we've got 38.4 volts. Obviously that's gonna drop a little bit under low, but around about 36 volts, close enough for me. So first up, I wanted to see if just this 12 volt battery, and I've isolated this battery by itself, if it could strike an arc on a thin piece of metal with thin rods. So put the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive. Now you'll notice I'm gonna throw a floor mat over the top each and every time I do this. Lead acid batteries, when they're under load, either charging or discharging, can emit hydrogen gas, which is extremely flammable, <laughs> which is a great idea. So I wanna try and keep sparks off the top of this thing, and I've moved it far away, as far away as the leads will let me from where I'm actually welding, which is also a fantastic idea. Right, let's go and see if we can do some welding with just 12 volts. All right, so we're ready to rock and roll. So we've got our positive connected to earth here. We've got our work pieces here, which is a couple of bits of three mil, 2.6 mil electrode. Let's give it a go with 12 volts. Okay, so we obviously can't establish a spark with 12 volts. We're gonna need more voltage than 12 volts. Let's give it a go with 24 volts. Okay, so this time everything's the same except for we've got 24 volts running through the system. We've still got those two three millimeter coupons. Let's see if we can crack an arc. And look, it's, it's better. I'm actually depositing some weld material there, but it, it's certainly not <laughs> what I would consider a, a decent weld. We'll get in a little bit closer. I'll crack off the slag and we'll have a look. Okay, so this is <laughs> cleaned up. As you can see, we've definitely deposited some weld material there. And look, I'll tell you what, if I only had two batteries, I'd probably give it a crack. But uh, it, it's far from ideal that the, uh, the arc was far from stable. We need more voltage. All right, let's uh, try it with 36 volts. Okay, same setup as before, but 36 volts. I've also added an ammeter to the positive cable so you can see how much current she's drawing. Let's give it a go with 36 volts. That's running hot. <laughs> Let's see if we can join these two together. Okay, so I'm blowing holes in things. <laughs> and that means we've got too much current. It'll be interesting to have a look at the footage in a minute to see how much current I was drawing. So now we'll swap over to the six mil and see how that looks. Okay, so that was reasonably successful. We actually stuck our three mil plate to a bit of tube low, but it was running fairly hot with that 2.6 mil rod. This time we've got a 3.2 mil rod. We've still put our ammeter there so we can see how much current's going through. Let's give it a crack.
I'll tell you what, as an arc welder, I make a very good TIG welder. Let's put a bit more bead down. Okay, I'll let it cool down a second. I'll chip off the slag and we can have a look. Well, it doesn't look like I'm welding together pressure vessels anytime soon, but that is a structurally sound weld and that will get you home. So it looks like it's actually a viable option. 36 volts, 3.2 mil electrodes. Um, seems to do the job okay if you're welding thicker pieces of material, say suspension or a tie rod or something like that. So guys, now if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not once, not thrice, but twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. So if you've enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon. It's really important to us and you won't miss out on our future content. Now, if you want to support the channel, by all means, consider becoming a patron on Patreon and you'll get things like early access to our videos on YouTube. Either way, we hope to see you out on the tracks.